मनोधर्म और कल्पना संगीतम इट्स वन ऑफ द मोस्ट एक्साइटिंग एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ कर्नाटिक म्यूजिक दिस इज द इम्प्रोविजेशनल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ कर्नाटिक म्यूजिक देर आर देर आर दीज फाइव वेज इन विच इम्प्रोविजेशन हैपन्स इन कर्नाटिक म्यूजिक आलापना नेरवल स्वर प्रस्तारम तानम एंड विरुद्धम सिंगिंग एंड विरुद्धम थ्रू दिस कोर्स यू हैव हर्ड मोस्ट ऑफ दिस एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ मनोधर्म एंड इन दिस सेशन वी विल टॉक इन सम डिटेल अबाउट दिस वेरियस एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ मनोधर्म फर्स्ट आलापना the word alapana is a sanskrit word and it means conversation now alapana is uh, uh, arguably the most 
central aspect of Manu Dharma Sangeetam. It is uh, the king of Manu Dharma, so to say. Uh, and this is uh, borne out by the usage in ordinary uh, discourse when we say that he sang the ragam. It means he sang the alapana. So the ragam is best brought out, raga is best brought out most uh, impactfully or exhaustively to some extent. Raga is best brought out in its by its by an alapana. Now, alapana and other aspects of Manodharma are actually found in ancient uh, texts too. The, the, we, we find mention of Rupaka Alapti and Raga Alapti in medieval texts, no doubt uh, referring to Manodharma music. Rupaka refers to a kind of composition. So, Rupaka Alapti most probably uh, meant improvisation that uh, happens within the composition. And Raga Alapti refers to what we today call Alapana in Carnatic music. Now, broadly we can say that uh, improvisation, uh, there are two kinds of improvisation. One is that which is, which is standalone. It's in the sense it does not need the composition. There is improvisation that happens uh, outside of the composition and there are improvisational aspects that happen within the composition. There is using a compos using the composition as an anchor, these improvisations happen. Now, Ailapana uh, is something that uh, happens before a composition. That is, though we have these four or five aspects of Mano Dharma Sangeetam and uh, it is really the uh, musician's creativity that comes to the fore here, yet there is a, a place for these Mano Dharma aspects. They cannot spring up anywhere in a concert and anyhow. If we are speaking of a concert, then uh, there are certain points where we expect Manodharma in certain forms. Uh, of course, there is much more of to Carnatic music than just what we hear in, in concerts. Like any other art form, possibly, finest music is created outside concert uh, halls in during private music sessions, the, during practice sessions or during informal sorries and so on. But um, the point is though we have these four or five Manodharma uh, uh, aspects, they have a place and a proportion in a concert. So, alapana always precedes a composition. Alapana is always in a raga. A raga is brought out, uh, uh, an edifice of raga, so to say, is created using by the alapana. And this alapana in the particular raga almost always is a preface to the kriti itself, to the composition that follows the alapana in the same raga. Now, if the composition is a small composition, it is a minor composition, then quite often there is no alapana and if there is an alapana, it will be a very short one. If you have a big raga like Shankarabharanam or Kalyani and the composition is also great, most likely the alapana will be elaborate, it will be extensive. It is, uh, it would be very inappropriate for instance to sing a very elaborate ayalapana in a minor raga before a minor composition. So, ayalapana affords great scope for the musician's creativity imagination, but it is not 
a free rein obviously. There are clear uh, constraints within which the musician must work. First is obviously the raga's grammar. If you are singing a raga and Shankara Bharanam, you are going to stay within the grammar of Shankara Bharanam. And the other constraint is what uh, is imposed by the musician's equipment, vocal equipment, if she is a singer, what he or she can do with his or her voice, that will obviously uh, place uh, limitations on what can be done. And the third very important constraint, if we may call it a constraint, is an e the aesthetic consideration. Now, each musician, every musician will have her aesthetic preferences. So, even though I may be able to bring out certain movements from my voice, I may restrain myself from doing that out of aesthetic considerations. Now, this is very important in the making of a musician. Just because you are able to do something, you do not do it. Music in any art form is about judicious use of resources, uh, control above everything. So, how does one go about singing an alapana? First off, alapana as such is rarely taught. A guru uh, very rarely teaches an alapana, it is not even quite possible. What the guru does and what the musician is expected to do is learn compositions, learn varnams and kritis and padams in the raga and after you have internalized about a dozen such compositions and equally importantly after you have heard a lot of music, you hear a lot of performances, you hear your, your own teacher singing the raga, alapana of it, you attend concerts and absorb the raga in various such contexts, then the student attempts to sing alapana. And uh, what the guru does is more by way of saying that this is not quite right, why do not you try something else? Because um, ragas are very subtle creatures, there are great subtleties to ragas. And uh, as though we may be singing the notes that are uh, permissible in a raga, it is very, very possible to bring on shades of another raga by just a subtle movement here or a, a wrong uh, shake here or a wrong glide there or you touch another note and come down, it will it will suggest another raga. So, these um, possibilities are very real. So, the guru is uh, the guru's role is to to correct the student as he or she uh, tries her hand at alapana. Um, the guru also may, may also suggest uh, ways of uh, developing a certain idea in the alapana or improving delivery. That is about what uh, a guru guru's role can be in, uh, especially when it comes to singing alapana. Now, in an alapana, what is expected is that there be a very good introduction. When you introduce the raga, the first couple or three phrases of the alapana are very important um, because uh, it is expected that the raga's identity be very clearly established that there should be no wishy-washiness about those phrases. That if you are singing Kalyani, the first few phrases of your alapana must immediately establish the raga. There should be no doubt in the listener's mind that it is Kalyani that you are going to perform. Suppose uh, you should not sing phrases of some of Kalyani, some of Shankara Bharanaman, this is all a novice's uh, very understandable mistakes, but an Ayalapana's introduction is expected to firmly 
uh, established, the identity of the raga that is going to be performed. Uh, some master musicians can playfully keep you guessing, but that is one thing. It is another thing to fill the listener's mind with perplexity by going back and forth between uh, various phrases without quite getting a hold on the raga. So once the introduction of the alapana is done, I mean this is, as I said, this is just uh, how do you perform alapana? There is no one uh, blueprint, there is no one schema. The same person singing the same raga today and tomorrow, it will be completely different. But I'm. I am just giving some uh, an idea of some broad expectations, some things that are mostly adhered to all the time, but there is nothing hard and fast here except the requirement that the raga's grammar be maintained and there be an aesthetic coherence. But beyond that, you cannot say that an alapna should be this way or that way, but, um, but broadly we can expect that, that there are these various aspects to an alapna. You introduce the raga, introduce the uh, raga through a few very clear phrases and then there is development of the raga. Very often the musician may zone in into one swara, an important swara in the raga and weave many phrases around it. And, and always there is a variation in tempo. You won't find an alapana that is sung in the same uh, tempo throughout. That is, for instance, So, varying tempo is, um, there is including phrases in various tempos and uh, bringing them together judiciously. That is one way of creating interest in the alapana. Dynamics. Now, how a raga is developed depends very much on the nature of the raga itself. Now, if you have a heavily nuanced gamaka filled raga, some of the uh, rakti ragas like um, um, Sahana, Yadukula Kambuji, Ahiri, Deva Gandhari, these are all ragas that are major, that are very uh, nuanced ragas and their, their life is, uh, their life is in subtle gamakas and very definitive phrases. So a raga like this uh, cannot be developed to a great extent, you will only beat it to death. There is a few, a raga like sahana, it is possible of course to sing for 10 minutes or 20 minutes an alapana, but how far will it be effective, that is a question. And how this raga is treated? So you pay attention to the raga's nature. Let us watch Professor V. V. Subramaniam as he plays an alapana in the raga sahana and he also has a small bit to say about how it is possible to otherwise play this raga and how it is possibly not so appropriate to play it that way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
So this raga has a slow tempo expressing the uh, very soft moods and all that. Whereas the some frill like uh, fast uh, phrases also there. But it should not be played like this. image of Raha has gone. Because I have strength, I have voice uh, strength, uh, more conscious about the fast tempos and all that. I have the skill that doesn't work here. Like that. Of course, if you have a major raga like uh, Shankara Bharadam or Kamboji or Kalyani, these ragas can bear a very, very extensive treatment in all three registers, in varying speeds, um, so many swaras that can be highlighted. So these are all great big ragas. Now how these uh, ragas are developed? Uh, is also dependent on the musician's voice, how she has uh, worked at it, how she has trained her voice and also her aesthetic preferences.